Alrighty, so in the GT3, uh, whilst you were on the phone, I already logged you into the PCM, so that's all handled. Um, it, we're gonna start on the left, uh, all the way on the left, we're gonna go to the center and then the steering wheel, which is, as you can see, the, the most of the car yeah. will finish with, uh, as that is a little more tricky to understand. Uh, so on the left there, obviously you have as familiar your window switches, as well as the switches to activate the side mirrors and to change those. So I hope they're set up correctly as well. Uh, the hoop as you're used to from the RS models, and then a button to unlock and lock the doors. On the dash, something you cannot see for the camera up here on the left side of the steering wheel, you have your light switches, so it's an auto. Uh, besides that, you have your normal daytime running lights, uh, high beam, and you have your fog lights there as well. Um, ignition switch, as always, on the left. That key will always stay in the car nowadays, so uh, where the RS models used to have to have the key in there, nowadays it's just like with any other 911, it's just you can get in with the key in your pocket, uh, the special key, uh, like I explained, with the different metal and the RS logo on it. Leave it in your pocket, you can just start the car up, no problem. Uh, so that's everything behind the steering wheel uh, on the dash. Then behind the steering wheel on the left, we obviously have our high beam and light assist, as well as the uh, indicator. The lower stock is your cruise control, so you do have cruise control on the car. Um, makes it a little bit easier to keep the speed limit after a day on the track, one would assume. On the right hand side we have our wipers just the front no rear wiper available on the gt3 rs um, we'll get back to the steering wheel in a moment um, in here in the glove compartment this is where your toolkit lives there is no space in the front to place this so porsche has designed it so it fits snugly in here you can just get away with the replacement for the uh cup holder in there as well but that's about all you can fit in there your books are in the door we put them on the right um, we advise you to take them out store them somewhere safe all your information is in there obviously now it's just a little net to save weight up here we have two light switches and your emergency call button pretty straightforward in the center console here we have two USB-C chargers as well as a spot to hold your phone more in place no charging as that would add weight to the car. Handbrake is now in the center. Yep. The gear shifter, the new gear shifter for the RS, the new look, but the operation is the same. So you just push down, pull all the way down, go to drive, flick it to the left to go to the manual mode, if you will. You pull to go up a gear, you push like under braking to go down a gear. Volume control as well as your station control right here. Front window, rear window, your temperature left and right and how much it blows it's on auto right now we also have ac max on this side and this button is if you don't want fingerprints on the screen with some of the features here um, your lift so if i press it you feel the front come up and then it will ask you now save smart lift if you press save then it will always when you get up to this location from this angle, lift up automatically. Your dampers, and we'll go a little bit deeper into that because that is quite remarkable what they are able to do with that nowadays. Your hazards, uh, and like you had the buttons here, stability control and stability control and traction completely turned off um, for the big boys on the track. Then the new PCM. Same as with most of our cars nowadays, uh, nothing really has changed here. So we have our nav, which we can set up satellite map on that satellite map that's google map interface so that's where it pulls the data from search destination you can find any destination in due course at your home and work address if you so please um, ask google to find you anything that you might need like a racetrack and then google will start looking for anything with racetrack or that so there you go see a lot of horse race tracks, but you get what I'm yeah. saying with that. Um, so that's your nav and you'll always see that shortcut here on the left, regardless of what menu you're in. Media is your media. We have FM, we have Sirius XM, which will load Comes with it. three months. Right. In list, we can find all our stations. Those will also load. 
you seeing here all the stations that are available. They're all the generic stations. Um, Apple Music, Apple uh, Spotify, do you have any subscription with any of those services by any chance? Yeah, yeah, but no, not important. If you want, it will give you a QR code. You scan that with your phone and then your phone will log you in and will sync up your music subscriptions and everything with the car. Same goes with the buttons right here, the, the triple dials. You can add Apple Podcasts as well. Go to your favorites and switch in between. Bose is your Bose sound system, obviously. So what I usually tend to do is set it to surround on, leave linear off, and set bass to four and treble to three. And that, to me, is the most enjoyable way to listen to the sound system, each their own. Super easy to change, obviously. That essentially is your music. Phone, we've not connected the phone just yet. Uh, if you want to open up your Bluetooth menu. And in general, it works better when you have the car search the phone, not the phone, the car. Yep. Uh, up to you when you want to allow that or not. now your phone is synced up it should ask you in a second or it will like to use carplay it did not okay yes. uh, use carplay yes uh, we might have to turn on the wi-fi in the car that sometimes is uh, not working but as long as apple carplay is not active you can go through here so you can see your call history contacts your keypad where you have a shortcut a shortcut button for the breakdown call that's the same as this so there's multiple ways you think you can get to that there's a third way that's on the screen just a little bit further down right there exactly so here you see your drive modes that this is not the extra flexibility you have on the steering wheel and again we'll get to that drive mode right now is normal your sport exhaust button aerodynamics to activate dynamics you usually have to be in track so i don't know if it will allow me to do this right now Thus, uh, on the screen you see it's not ready. So there are certain driving conditions that the car has to meet in order to be able to allow you to activate the DRS. I'm assuming it has to do with speed as well to even lower the flap. Chassis, you have sport and track, and in track you can then truly adjust everything from the steering wheel, and again, we'll go over that. Trip information is all your trip information, so you see everything in here, as you might be used to. Comfort is your comfort. The only thing that you can really set here is your ambient lighting. Right now it's green as you saw downstairs. I suggest that we would change that to red to match the, uh, the theme of the car here. And the cool thing with this system nowadays is that you can also add a dynamic feature where it will then change dependent on the album art cover that is playing at that moment in time. So that is now on dynamic. If you want to change that, super easy to car, comfort, and just turn it back to red. So if there's no album art cover that it can find, it will default to red. Okay. Otherwise, it will change with whatever the album art cover is that you see here. So now there's probably a purplish hue to it um, at this moment in time. Air conditioning is your in-depth control. So you can see where you want the air to come from, uh, but everything else is still down here. Um, you can set the football cooler if you want to, uh, which on track days is kind of nice to keep your foot a little bit cooler uh, so you don't have that slippery feeling of uh, pedals. Notifications, any of your notifications will come in here if you're not connected through Apple CarPlay. Also car updates, all that sort of stuff, everything will show in here. Home link is your garage door opener. So you press configure a new profile and then you can configure the profile to match it's GPS based as well. So super easy to use. Uh, once you are home, that's where you would set that up because it is based on the GPS. Devices are all your devices. So you see your phone is already connected. If we press Apple CarPlay, it's gonna enable Bluetooth Wi-Fi and then it should start pulling up now that we've done that. Sport Chrono is your Sport Chrono, which is still like you're used to as well. Um, the cool thing now, if you record, it will actually show you how 
the lab unfolds if you just use this system. So let AdvoCarPlay now load in. You can record 10 hours saved to this. Settings is all your settings. That's where you will change everything that you need to in the car. That's one of those notifications. Um, most people will not have to change that much. Apple CarPlay takes over the whole screen. And then you see that turns green so you know it's active. In updates, you'll find all your updates and they will come through. You'll just see one, you press, you press once time, like just automatically and everything is getting taken care of. That's the third way to get the breakdown call, or now the second way, because now your phone, as you see, will turn you to CarPlay. You can check the weather from within the car. So you have your current location as the top line, and you can add your favorite places as well if you want to know what the weather is doing. Once you navigate through with the menu, you'll see the weather at what location at what time. So you kind of know what you're getting during your drive, which is pretty uh, pretty cool. You can sync up your calendar if you want to. Uh, there's some Porsche legal information. We already logged in. If you lost this, then you have the instruction book right there. Cool. The, and everything is in there. So anything that you might want to know change is in there. You can book your smart services, uh, which is just your, your general maintenance through here. And you can subscribe to Porsche Newsfeed uh, or any other news source. Is there any news in particular that you try to follow. So let's say like Fox, CNN, MSNBC, uh, any of the big news that you follow. They're all the same. Pretty much, yeah. but so say you look for um, the BBC. They do have channels. So home press that. Now is that through the satellite radio or is that through Porsche? That's through Porsche. So um, we'll press complete setup. You can always add more. So find a local channel, BBC's. Uh... No, uh, as, a, as an example, I'm just showing you. It will load all the data. So this works off the cellular network that's connecting with the car. Not through your phone. There's a separate system for that in the car. Uh, it will load all the data in and then you can have it read out to you on your way to work. I'm guessing there's a little bit much to load right now, so um, we'll jump back to that if we need to. Uh, but that is essentially this system. Then the trickier part, which is the steering wheel and what we can change here. So we're gonna start on the left. This is your DRS button. In a straight line, if you press that, the rear wing opens up as well as two flaps that are hidden behind the front bumper. Now they were able to get those flaps in there because they moved the center radi the radiator to the center and that's why you don't have a frunk anymore. Um, weight is more centralized, um, more air or more heat exchange as well, and they can get those flaps. And if you look forward, I noticed it earlier, not really as much now, uh, but I did see heat blasting out of the front, uh, sort of heat waves. Uh, on the roof, you have those two strakes that are back here. Like I said, those are just to keep that hot air separated so you don't suck it into the engine. Um, all wind tunnel tested, so unless there's a very heavy crosswind, that should all work. Uh, this right here is your volume control, and that is just for your sound system. Speak to the car, or that's just a quick press. Press and hold, and you will get Apple CarPlay. Thank you. Then we have a little button right here. Press that. That immediately starts your lap. If you want to time it. Okay. And you press this button, and then you show everything else that is in there. So that's if you really want quick access to a quick lap. And on this side, we have this button right here. And that will just take you immediately to the Sport Chrono. So whatever menu you are in here, should have. Okay, that's how she works. So you start your timing session, and that's your lap on your other hand. 
and then you see here, as you saw, just pop up how much quicker or slower you were that lap than previously. So on the right hand side, we start with general car information. So 405 miles of range, because we have had the car running a little bit. The car sits at around 200 Fahrenheit at heat, um, 35 PSI, and then the battery, obviously. We got our trip information. We have our map now, where in here you can also, again, I just press this to click in, and we can also get our satellite map in there depicted as well. Sport Chrono with the buttons on the steering wheel, so just press start. You see that timer in the center there starts. Um, if you press that, new lap, or you just press here, new lap, and then you see here how much quicker you are on the screen uh, for a brief moment in time. So if you want to see what it was, you do have to be quick. G-force meter, if you press, you can also see the max G-force. Um, and this car is capable of a lot more than what you see here. I think from what I've seen, like 1.8 in corners, which is quite uh, quite significant. Your tire pressure information will come up once you start driving the car. You see the power and you see the torque. So torque is pretty much all there, but like you'll get an extra bump over five and the power is truly at five. You see that steeper incline and that's just the way the engine is set up that at those higher engine speeds, the engine just works better and produces more power as a result. So it's truly higher performance. Drive modes is through here as well. And then finally track, you can show the track. So you see it's a far less cluttered yeah. interface. Uh, you can always show that or press back to show all the other information and that is your final bit there here's your drive modes sport and then you see in here that drive mode is sport the exhaust opens up standard and then we go to track where you see dynamic downforce is now standard and your chassis goes away So the chassis mode disappears altogether. The chassis mode is what? So you don't have an option for the suspension, it's just... No, you do, you do. And we're, now we're getting to that little part of it. So in normal, you're more normal, the sport exhaust close, low down force, and the chassis is sport, or the normal drive mode for this car. In sport, it goes to drive mode sport. The aerodynamics stay the same, but the exhaust opens up and your chassis goes to track. You, if you go further, that disappears, dynamic downforce comes on, and now everything is controlled through the steering wheel. Okay. So we're gonna start with passive. You see this pop up. Compression and rebound. Compression is a how stiff the car reacts to a bump. Rebound is how quickly it goes back to the original position. And then the oscillation in between there, that's, that's still compression and rebound. Um, the difference, so you can select either front or rear to minus four and plus four. This is center, okay? Plus four means it's 100% stiffer than what it otherwise would have been. If you go minus four, it's 40% softer. Okay. Same goes for the rebound. So it all depends on how you want the car to drive. Now, all these settings changes are within the safety limits of the car. There are, Porsche has set up like some, like suggestion for some tracks that they've taken this car to. Uh, and I'm sure you can find this online. I can do my own reaches for you as well. Uh, but it's all about driver preference. If you press the bottom one here, you get your torque vectoring. So that is on coast, which is when you're off power, as well as on power. Now essentially, if you lock this up, you're locking the differential on the rear. Not fully, but the car wants to shoot forward more than when you have it at minus. So if minus four is a very twisty track, plus four is where you need all the power out of a straight. Okay. And obviously, you can also change this whilst driving. Coast is the same thing, but under braking or when you're not on throttle. So how much do the wheels 
want to stay in line with each other. So you can set it where under power you are fully like locked in and really shoot forward, where under coasting or, or no throttle, that you do have that flexibility, if you will. Then once you press the yellow, now we're on the right. So stability control, we have off, dynamic, on. And you can set it. You also see the traction control up top change in terms of the range. So we can have traction fully on, say wet track, or this one, two, and three is a rubbered in track. This would be street, this is wet, and then this is like, you know, compared to Formula One and the Porsche Super Cup, the Friday, the Saturday, the Sunday, and if you really know what you're doing, off, and you can slide however the hell you want. If you combine that with the torque, the power, the PTT Plus Power Plus 4, that's when it's easiest to do a burnout, a donut, something like that. So those are all the buttons here that you have available here. Okay. All right. So instead of just on off, again, we got it on video, so. Uh, uh, I'll watch that <laughs> 10 times tonight, hopefully to remember. Um, but that's all the controls that you have on the steering wheel. I know it's a lot. Yeah. Um, please note, in the owner's manual, they have a special booklet as well. Uh, you did tell me that you were planning on taking the last one out on the track, go. Yeah, I wanted to pick it up in Tennessee and do the track run with it, but. Uh... There is a special manual, completely devoted to how to prep the car for driving on track. Now the other manual, that's all your standard manuals you get with any i 11 This you only get with a GT3 and a GT3 RS, and it dives deeper into the aerodynamics of the car. So the GT3, the rear wing adjustment, the front wing adjustment, um, the brakes and how to measure them properly, but also where the air ducts are, how they operate. So really technical information in here, and then to set the camber, the stabilizer bars, your suspension, how everything essentially works is in here, as well as if you do track it, your intervals are quicker. Okay. So also something to keep in mind. When is the first service on this thing? Uh, Earth's oil change is doing 10,000 miles. Okay. Unless you track it, because on every track mile, or every hard driven mile essentially is why you should look at it. Um, count for two normally driven miles. Okay. And that essentially is your car. Awesome. With this button, I forgot you can change to this and you can get some more information in there as well. But the fact that you can have the DRS on there, it's just awesome to me. I'm excited to learn it, get to play with it. It's a downforce heavy car. Showing you the pictures of the front wheel well, the same goes for the rear. Like those suspension parts create downforce, believe it or not. In the front, there are those flaps on both sides and you see them depicted, yeah. they create downforce. The rear wing, you've seen it go up and down, that creates downforce. Everything on this car creates downforce. The total downforce of this car at the same speed is higher than that of the McLaren Senna, which was already pretty high focused. So, congrats. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your patience. Um, first 911 GT3 out of the store. I wish you many safe miles. Thank you, thank you. And you, I'm just a phone call away. I'm 